We've got to hurry, Liam! Everybody's hungry and wanting the soup! <laughs> oh, alright. Wait, no, don't shimmy down the ladder. No, I know a more exciting way. <laughs> zip line! <laughs> zip line! Liam, I said zip line. There we go! Oh, okay. Well, uh... <laughs> I guess that's what happens if you jump off early. Uh, is there anything else we could do? Hit your bottom! Like a boss. No, fall damage, that's not a thing. You know what, let's... Okay, let's start getting the gossip in. Let's, let's... Hey, hey, tell me about Laban, even though he's literally right there. The thing about Laban is that he speaks without words. You just need to understand his language. For that matter, most everybody will tell you more truth from what they do than what they say. True. And with Laban... Since he doesn't speak much anyway, it's easier to get the message. Do you Ken? I respect so, it. As an example, if Laban does something for you, uh, maybe he does one of your chores or, or cleans up a mess, that's how the great big dandelion says he's fond of you. If he doesn't do anything for you, well, you can be sure you're not his favourite. Uh oh. The same goes the other way. Don't tell Laban you're his friend. Show him. Speak his language, which is acts of service. And now you see exactly why I make the not insignificant effort to speak for the boy as often as I can. Which is practically always. <laughs> it's how he knows I care. Okay, I see. Tell me about yourself, Raby. My grandfather was from a land across the Western Sea. And the family legend says he once kissed a magic stone that loosed his tongue and gave him uncanny insight into the hearts of others. As the story continues... The wise old mouse breathed his last the very day I was born. Indeed, the very moment. Magama says that some of the old bard left him and flew straight into me, like a bee betwixt blossoms. That's <laughs> not uh, how that works. It would explain more than a little. Don't think that's biblical. Life, don't you think? Wise beyond my years, perceptive like an eagle, and humble, humble like a daisy. <laughs> If I didn't inherit the very gifts my famous grandfather was so known for by transference, then I don't know any better explanation. Cool. Now tell me about Tussa. She seems like a Sundere, right? As you know, I can read most beasts like a note from my own mother. But Tussa has me flummoxed. Yep, definitely a Sundere. She's ready enough with a kind word and keeps her own in all the scout missions. But lift one finger on her behalf and she'll just as soon as bite your tail. Of every creature in Lily Grove. She's a true mystery. I agree. Wait, can I... Can you... <laughs> Freebie, did you know that your tail twitches like an asp every time you talk about Tussa? What? Uh, me? No, uh, no, not at all. The thought never crossed my desperately clever mind. Not her, nor any lass will ever tie me down. Not in a hundred years uh -huh. that soft-eared... Long-tailed siren of a mouse get Freeby to shun the simple life he leads. Oh, I. A simple life seems just the thing for a mouse like you. Dusty cupboards, a cold but tidy hearth, your silver tongue untrammeled atop your grey muzzle. <laughs> what is? What are you doing, Liam? Loving mate to tame its wrath. <laughs> oh, Freeby has one young mouse to another. Snuggling up to the damn you fancy isn't the misery and strife you fear. Tussa? Two question marks? Liam, seeing how we seem to be getting on so well this fine evening, do you mind if I ask you something a bit personal? When you were getting to know Sophia, did she ever punch you in the arm? Or the side? Or the back of the head? No. No. No, oh, uh, no matter. Just something Tussa does that has me thinking. <laughs> Uh, never mind. Forget Here's the thing. If the Just now, Fraby, the most silver-tongued mouse I've ever known, has asked me for relationship advice. And about Tussa, no less. Will wonders never cease? Oh. It has me thinking, though. How did Sophia approach me when we were just courting? You don't remember? She never exactly hit me. But she was always reaching out with a pat on the elbow. Or a brush to my paw. Was that how she was letting me know she cared? I must say, whatever her method, I got Well, that's different from literally hitting people. I Even if it's playful, I just, I don't get like that, oh, I like this person, I'm going to treat them bad so they don't know. It's like, if you like the person, let them know. Just, you know, be tactful about it. And this is why I don't like the Sundere archetype at all. Old Rootsworth, 
Huh, there's much more to that bandy old hair than you know. When he's he's not, not a hair. Scout corps, and making a fine joy of it, I must say. He's delivering pasties and profiteroles to widows and orphans the village. Particularly the widows. If <laughs> oh, the sly dog. <laughs> About that. How does he get here? That's what I'm trying to understand. With that brutal climb and all. I told you. The crafty creature is a lot more spray than you'd imagine. I once saw him scamper straight up a waterfall as tall as a spruce, and he barely lost his breath. Really? No, I just made that up. But I made you picture. <laughs> I like his laughing sprite. I, I also like his accent. It's, it's very good. <laughs> I'd like to talk about myself. <laughs> My favorite memory of you, Liam, was when a sour-faced old hare, skinny as a bag of bones and twice as dusty, came through town with his cart full of books and slates, working up all the mums that we Dibbons needed to be schooled in maths and taught all about geography. It was fun for a day or two, but getting bored we feared it would never end. Then, in a spit of genius, you filled the ink pots with honey, and before the rascal knew what had happened, he'd gummed up all his books with his own quill. <laughs> oh, that's right! Master Dayspringer, I think. No, oh, he was a storm cloud in a kettle, wasn't he? I think if we hadn't done something soon, our mums would have apprenticed us to the Abbey. That would have been oh, cool. But the honey wasn't the half of it. You, dear sir, put soap water in his tea. Oh, the price our young hides paid that day. And I don't regret a moment. <laughs> ah, ah. Nor I. Very, very nice. I don't suppose you have any words of wisdom for a passing bachelor, do you? You've always had a way with people. Sometimes I feel like Sophia is an open book, and I feel I understand every warp and woof of her heart. But other times, she can be so enigmatic and opaque. Oh, I don't we definitely would get thinks. different dialogue here if we played as Sophia. You to wait in a few days, and you're asking me now. Well, here's a bit of wisdom for you. If you can't always do what's right, then at least don't do what's wrong. With Sophia, growing up the way she did with so many just waiting for the right maid's ladies to fail, offering her help when she hasn't asked is a sure way to earn her ire. Learn to keep the briars from between you, and you'll be halfway to bliss. Oh dear, that makes perfect sense. Why didn't I ever put that together before? Oh, is that so? I mean... That, I guess that's a good way of going about it. <laughs> as long as you're both, like, aware that that's how it works and she's not expecting you to step in. Oh, uh, yeah, tell me about everybody. I want Mr. all the gossip. Coyle is a good beast, to be sure. He's always done right by me. And Captain Robin speaks of him with more respect even than Freya Thomas. But mark my words, it wasn't always so. I don't know anything, and I'm not about to gossip. But every so often, he says something just so. Or laughs at just the wrong thing. Hmm. I couldn't see anything for sure, but I'd be boiled in beech nut if that mouse doesn't have a skeleton in his closet. Okay. It's always good to know just how a mouse likes to be treated. And everybody is different, so you have to pay close attention. Uh, with the captain, it's the kindness you see, and it never hurts to give an honest compliment anyway. <laughs> well, except for Mr. Coyle, that is. Mm. Say something complimentary to him. And he's certain to say I was just buttering his toast. Which I was. <laughs> That's not the point. The point is he's oversensitive. And I was only trying to be nice. I, I well, it's mean, different if you're in a position of authority. You trying to be nice. It's easy if you're in a position of authority to see people who are complimenting you to flat. So, or they're trying to flatter you uh, to uh, suck up, so to speak. All right, cool. We got all the gossip. Uh, he's Okay, so Fraby kind of opened up to us a bit. I'm wondering if we had kind of pushed his buttons back when he was irritable, if he would have done the same thing, or if we, we would have been like, I ain't telling you, squat. What's up? Good What's up, Laban? Him. Hey, hey, I want to... Uh, tell me about yourself. Me? Not much to tell, really. You know, I'm only a few feet even older than you. But growing up, we never mixed much, did we? I suppose that's my fault. I'm not quite comfortable with other people. Crowds make me angry. I get that, for sure. How about Fraby? He's been a great friend. <laughs> Aw, I love his little smile. Both of us, which suits me just fine. He quite likes company and crowds, always trying to get me to talk more. 
speak up for myself as he puts it. But I'm quite content to let him do it for me. Yeah, okay, yeah, his dialogue's a lot quicker than Fravy's was. Did you know Tother and Cloverdown are making a quilt together? Seems hard to imagine on both counts to me. Tother fitting quiet with needle and frame, and Cloverdown using thread for anything except catching fish. Yeah! <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> I thought that said Christopher Robin for a second. Tell me about Christopher Robin! Captain Robin has been like a second father to all of us, Scouts. Or a first father to Thumb. Every mouse here would lay down their life if Captain Robin said it was the right thing. Wow. Most everybody in town thinks I'm simple. Won't spare me a second thought. The captain, though, he never flicked a whisker when I applied. And now I'm third in command. Dan! A scout is as a scout does, he tells me. And that quite suits me. Nice job, Laban. Uh, tell me... Oh, okay. Tell me about Sophia. You're a lucky one, Liam. Sophia always smells so nice and smiles so wide. The Rhymeade ladies don't get a lot of respect around town. Hmm. But that'll change now that she wears a bloom. Just you wait and see. There's some, there's some uh, gossip going around town about the ladies, apparently. Do you remember that hot summer many seasons ago? Nope. When you and Brunnock were still dibbons and down in the reeds, headed toward a row. One you were destined to lose as he was older, stronger, and most of all, a bully. Not a good combo. Remember then how he yelped in pain and ran home, wailing like a raven, leaving you whole and happy and chasing dragonflies? That was a slingstone that scuffed his skull, that was. I wonder how I know that. Ah, oh, did you shoot him? Oh, cool. Ah, uh, tell me about Rootsworth. That's a great mouth, that one. And he seems to understand me better than most. Not much by looking at him, no. But he has the heart of a giant, he does. Aye. In a tight spot, I'd want Rootsworth at my side before just about anybody else here. Just something about... Is it because he knows food? <laughs> I... I agree. Oh, wait. Could we have about that? Oh, the path up that cliff face is a real challenge. It must keep <laughs> Liam really wants to know. <laughs> right. That's by divine, that is. Makes Hilltop Camp like our secret hideout. Exactly. So, does Rootsworth maybe... No, he said a Ferrara's just... Wind uh, warp it? point. Well, That's how he does it. Huh? <laughs> oh, I see what you're getting at. I never thought of that. Maybe Rootsworth is actually younger than he looks, and he's just pretending to be old. Mr. Oh! Likes me very much. Really? It's not as though he's unkind or rude or anything. It's just that he seems to look at me like he's always biting his tongue, not saying something he wants to. Hmm. Do you think I'm imagining? Interesting portrait. <laughs> I don't even get to respond. Okay, never mind. Best I not distract you. Busy night and all. Too late. We already took up about half the video for just that. <laughs> I'll try to put in timestamps so people can skip that if they don't want to see all of it. Ah, uh, activate the slingshot. Wait, is there a reason to activate the slingshot, though? I didn't think so. Doop, 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 doop. Okay, so we found the vegetables last time. Now we gotta find more vegetables, like beets. Even though I don't like beets, and they very rarely were mentioned in the Redwall uh, books. Can I pull up the map? Okay, so... Obstacle course. So that's where we're at right now. Hot Springs is a little far... Okay, cool. It definitely feel like this game is, it feels like this game is about 75% talking to people. Which I can get behind that. It just doesn't make for a very interesting let's play. Okay, this I think will take us back to camp. Uh, yeah. So that's where the main camp is. I don't want to go to the main camp. I want to go to the hot springs. So maybe if we go on this, um... Ooh! Yeah, like these tiles over here, maybe. Ha-ha! 
A lesser game would have made it so it would be difficult to jump up those, but not here. Oh, wait, we've already been here. Shoot. I thought this was where the hot springs were going to be. Oh, my. Are you sure that's what happened? Wait, but what? Wait, what happened? I just jumped on a bush and apparently that counted as Liam dying. All right, that seems a little extreme. I was strolling through the park one day in the very, very month of May. Okay, which way to the hot springs? That's what I want to know. So this is the dead end area. We don't want to go that way. Yuppie! Ooh. Okay. Dead end area. So if we go out here, is there a way to, like, zoom in? I think, I think this is the obstacle course, isn't it? Or maybe we're... No, that's... No, we are... That was the obstacle course. I remember the notes from last time. It was like, oh, get the onion, carrot, and potato from the obstacle course was one of the to-do list items. Which is what I did. But this is where the main camp is. Maybe the hot... Or, well... Oh! Okay. We gotta learn this scent, that's for sure. This beet is a bit pale, but it should do. Okay, we learned the scent of beets. Cool. This is a carrot, and the shriveled one's a boot. Can we pick all of them? A juicy red beet, fresh from the garden. This is a carrot. Okay. This beet is a bit... That's all... That's all you needed from the garden? Hold on. Oh, shoot! I should have used my scent. I see now. Oh, doggone it. Shoot. You can use your scent to see how big they are. I was just picking willy-nilly. I didn't realize that. Doggone it. I'm really bad at this game. <laughs> it is my first play. Well, it's my... One and a half playthrough, I guess. Oh! A burrow. Wait, hang on. So we can look at different places? Oh, it's like a shortcut. This is the hot springs. Here we go. You can tell because of the steam coming off of it. Are you sure that's what happened? Well, so much for it being the hot springs. Get back here. Man, checkpoints are not super generous in this game. Okay. That looked like the hot springs. They're literally, there's steam coming off of them. Or are these the hot springs? Okay, well now I'm paranoid. Oh ho! New lore, survival tip. You know, we really should start reading those. Uh, bip, 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 bip. Documents, survival tip. Wild mushroom survival tips. Light brown caps with neck. Trills kill. Neck trills? That's weird. Brown and smooth, the chef approves. The wrinkled and warped are often delicious, but it never hurts to stay suspicious. Good to know. Letter to Tussa. Tussa, my girl, how do you fare? Feels like seasons since we last spoke, although I know it's only a sh for few short moons. Are you feeling well? Any injuries? Those men aren't rugging you ragging, are they? I'm so glad that you, uh, to hear that you finally have a kindred soul in that dusty old campsite. The ground isn't too hard or frigid, is it? I can send you another quilt. Lavender, maybe? With berry embroidery and a tan cross pattern. Oh, you will look just like a little pie, all wrapped up in a fabric crust, you will. That settles it. Another quilt it is. I'll send it with the next courier. Anyways, Sophia sounds absolutely darling. I hope to meet her soon. 
I know that I have met her, but she was such a little thing. Littler than even you at that age. And those sweet little freckles, uh, like a sugar dusting over a deep golden nunny motors. You should bring her over sometime. I know it's a trek, but company shortens the journey, as they say. Or at least I'm sure someone has said it. Your father's reading over my shoulder and demands I lighten up on the worry. I know you're full grown and a scout, but be still my heart. A full-fledged scout tussling with danger and wilderness. But a mother can't help but worry about her only dear sweet daughter out there in the world. Goodness gracious, you don't even have anyone to look after you if you caught a case of the shivers or black water fever. Are there at least any sweet bows at that camp? What about the new other new lad? The new lad before the last lad. You know, the, uh, the small one. I bloom into a handsome little rosebud yet. <laughs> I'm not trying to pry or push, but there is something great about having a companion in life. Your brother just met the most adorable lassie at the last harvest gathering. They're getting along like sweet toast and jam and just as delightful. The way fiends are, I should think I can expect Grand Dibbons at last. But I suppose that news should be left for him to tell you. But I'm sure I talked your eyes off by now. I can hear your displeased sigh in my, mi yeah, my, my mind's ear just now. Just know that I love you more than anything this world over. Your mum. P.S. Your father says hi. But I feel like I really should say hi. <laughs> I, I, I feel like to really say hi, he should be writing his own letter. So I'll be sure to give him a hard time when next you write. Okay. Well, there we go. Yeah, I, I thought those were going to be the hot springs. Not that some alternate ending. Just kidding. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I don't get it. It literally, like, there was steam coming off of it. So that should be hot enough that we can take a relaxing dip in. Okay. Oh, that's not two possible ways to go. It's a, Never mind, I'm an idiot. What's the point of that? If there's nothing over there. Maybe it'll be used later on. Ooh. It's so green over this way. Oh no, invisible walls. You were doing so well, game. I thought this was going to be one of those games where you can pretty much go anywhere. Alright, looks like I'll have to... Oh, okay, hang on. Ha! Got it. That wasn't so hard. Now then, what's left? Mm-hmm. Yes, I've got everything. I better go check in with Rootsworth. I'm positively famished. Oh, we got the Fraby specialty cheese. I don't know why he just left it there, but all right. Oh, that's complete now, is it? Speak with Rootsworth. Well, hold on. I haven't finished exploring everything yet. Also, I definitely have not gossiped with everybody yet. Oh my gosh, it's almost day... T Wait, there's a day-night cycle in this game? Dude, that looks beautiful. Are we gonna, like... Are people gonna get angry at us if we don't actually... If we don't make the soup soon? Like, if the longer we take, the more upset people get. Is that how it's gonna be? Oh, wait. This is the lookout area again. Whoops. Actually, maybe it's not the lookout area. Is there anything below here that's worth grabbing? May as well check. See, it feels like this would be an area they'd put a lore clue or something. Oh, uh -huh, new scent. Collected four jam, yes. I knew there was gonna be something down here that was worthwhile. You know, I feel like this game was made for me. I, I love making jam now, so... Oh! No, no, no! Liam, no! Is that some sort of alternate ending? I just made that up. Sorry, Liam. I thought you could jump that far. Wait, where did the, where did the ladder go? Wait, where did the ladder go? Am I no longer in the same area I literally just was in? Why would you do that? I thought I got a checkpoint after picking up the jam. Also, do I have to pick up the jam again? Dude, okay. The, the graphics of the sky are beautiful. Even if the character's graphics aren't, like, phenomenal. That sky, man, that's beautiful. 
That's really good. Oh ho! New lore, porridge feast. Yeah, we need that lore. How about we jump up? Okay, okay, I don't think we can jump up any higher than that. So do we have to pick up the jam again? Oh, I hope I didn't mess up. Okay, no, it counts that we have the jams. Sorry, Liam, made you drop uh, for nothing. Now, the question is, do I want to get the gossip from everybody? Or do I just want to call it quits? I kind of want all the lore. I guess I can always allow... I'll, I'll, again, I'll try to put timestamps in the video to just be like, Hey, I don't care about this. Skip to the actual gameplay. If that's the case, these are going to be 5 to 10 minute videos. <laughs> but hey, maybe people like that. You know, not everybody wants to watch an hour long video. Okay, so we already got the gossip from the main free guys at the campfire. Is there any lore in here that we missed? That's a lot of scrolls. Wait, is that jam? I want the jam! It's my favorite. I'm also a little... Uh, I'm a little disappointed in myself that I didn't pick the right vegetables that were ripe and raring to go. I really need to use my scent ability more. You just have to come to a complete stop before you can do it. Okay, at the very least, Tussa. We can talk to Tussa. Have you not any work to do? Okay, I'm just about to do it, but I want to gossip a little bit. Tell me about yourself. You had to ask about me, didn't you? You remember, I was always so awkward and graceless. Growing up near mice like your Sophia and Foxglove always put the jiggles in my stomach. That's why me and Cloverdown stuck to fishing. The logic of line and tackle is simple. It never changes, and there's no guessing if the day was for winning or losing. Okay, fair enough. How about Fraby? Hey, how, what do you think of Fraby? Do you do you do you kind of do you let, you get to see any sparks flying? Fraby? Well, I wouldn't know the first thing about him. Why do you ask? Uh oh, freebie maybe. I suppose on further reflection that he can be. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, she's the Sundere. Occasionally funny. I like how they put an extra question mark at the end every time to let you know there's more dialogue. That's actually a good touch. Even charming. Okay, there's definitely sparks going. Freebie. <laughs> I'm mostly guessing at this point. I hardly know him. Okay, yeah, she's pl she's playing coy. I'm mostly... <laughs> so call me, Fraby. You got any work to do? Hey, you know, you know, just shut your trap for a second there. I didn't much gather with the Raymaid girls when we were young. In truth, I kept most often to myself. But I've come to be quite fond of Sophia now as we've been scouts together. She's quite a special creature, Liam. And so help me, you better be good to her. She's smart and strong and full of life, that one. Do right by her, and the two of you have a real chance at finding this special life in this great big forest. Oh yeah, I I hope so. Uh, I'd like to tell you about a little bit about myself. I don't think I've forgotten all the times you pulled some nasty prank on me when we were young. I especially remember one night you slept an eel into my bait box. What? Did that happen? Me? Why, Tussa Paul's nettle. Perish the thought. There now, don't get down in the waffles. I said I remembered. You never said I was cross. When we were young, it was as if Cloverdown was my mate and you were a puka. We'd shout and shoo you off, but then we'd laugh at it all that week. I kept mostly to myself, but you were always in my shade. And I took it as a kindness. Seeing how we'll be scouts, and you're off to wave that sweet mouse. I thought you should know. Okay. That's nice. Tell me about Rootsworth. Rootsworth has been quite good to me, I must say. A right gentle mouse he is. Except in the filthy apron, of course. I he is the chef. With him. His father and his father's father were chefs for the Scout Corps, but he hasn't got any dibbins of his own, so he's keen to teach his trade to anyone who'll listen. Show the slightest bit of interest in cooking, and you're his instant favorite. Oh, I'd get along well with him. I loved it. About that. Did you ever get to wondering, though, just how and when he gets up here? I've never quite seen him arrive or depart. It just always seems he's either up here or down in town. I can't imagine him climbing the ascent path. 
He's, he him. uses the quick warp option, obviously. Yes, Laban. He is a sweet and gentle fellow, isn't he? And I'm quite sure he's only trying to be nice, but it does so get under my pelt when he tries to help me with just about anything. He's just a helper by his nature, he is, and it's ever so sweet and kind, but for me, a mouse who's trying her best to stay bold and strong on her own merit, it can be blasted frustrating. Do you ever feel that way? Irritated when a beast offers to lend a hand on something you're quite able to do yourself? Not at all. I'm quite the opposite to be true. But Sophia is much like you, I think. Still, I can scarcely imagine gentle Laban being patronizing or mocking. Yeah. You're right there. Ugh, I can be such a wildcat at times when I get my whiskers ruffled. Ugh, I hope I haven't offended him. Ah, uh, probably not. Uh, tell me about Coil. I don't talk about it much, but I owe Mr. Coil my very life. Twice. Dude, I don't talk about it much, but I'll tell you to this total newbie who I barely know. Was brewing. Some of the foulest misery ever to meet my nostrils. The whole adventure put us in the middle of a wide bog, and with the mist and rushes, it was easy to lose sight of one another. When out of nowhere, this great and dreadful toad leaps from the mist and drops a huge net over my head. Not the toads! I pinned my sword sheath, and the slimy beast made a mighty croak of victory as he stood over this helpless scout. Suddenly, I see Mr. Coyle leaping from the branches above, screaming in a voice like the storming surf. Like the wind, his blade clove the arm from that wretched toad, and the spirit was holding, staining the reeds with its blood. In shock, the toad leapt backward as if it had been hit by a badger's cudgel, and an enormous splash was the last we heard of the monster. Oh my! That was this last summer! Oh, I had no idea we'd be in any kind of danger. Bro, you're a scout. I like, I thought you were supposed to scout out for dangerous sure things. keep my wits then. Uh, but, hold now. You said he'd saved you twice. Yeah, I don't know how to cook. He saved my butt when I had to cook at my initiation. Yeah, wee bit better. That's fair. I don't mind saying that I wish Captain Robin was my own father instead of the one I got. For all the great mouse has on his mind, he's never once quieted my question or turned me away for wisdom. I think all the scouts feel that way. He's like the dad and granddad we all wish we had, whether in our real past we're good mice or not. Captain Rom is just special, he is. Don't you think? I mean, he, he does He does remind me of Robin Hood. I will never trade my father for anyone in this great green world. Captain Robin is wise and brave and surely kind. But I can't see him telling a single joke in his entire life. That's something I would never replace in my own paw. Uh, for instance... Why don't the river shrimp contribute to the Abbey pool box? Oh, please, Liam. They're Just shellfish. Stop. Because they're shellfish. <laughs> See, Captain Robin would never pull a gag like that. He ain't telling the dad jokes. Say that like it's a bad thing. Okay, Tussa. Really? Fine. Never mind. We gotta make the soup now. Actually. Okay. Do, 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 do. Become a scout by passing and doing the celebration feast. Okay, it says we have all the ingredients we need, but we also have recipes that need more stuff, I would assume. Oh, can we read the riddle? Mysterious riddle number one. Feldspar. Hmm, interesting. From P. Star Thistle. Interesting. Um, okay, let's take a look at the recipes. Hot root soup. Ten pawfuls of paprika, three pawfuls of ground peppercorns, one and a half jacks of ground hot root, three green onions, two cups of pure spring water, one pawful of chili powder, one cup of shrimp and fish. Mix water, pepper, and paprika together and heat it uh, for five minutes at a low temperature. Slowly add the rest. Slow boil and let it, uh, co and let is, let is? Let is cool to the palate. Add chili powder and enjoy. Beware, spicy. Yeah, no, no, duh. That's a lot of heat that you're adding to that. No. I want... I want to hear about the uh, roasted carrot and mushroom soup. One thick sliced carrot, one score... Or eight thick sliced carrots. One score of quartered mushrooms, three sliced onions, two cloves of smeared garlic, one pawful of salt, one and a half pawful of pottle... Spring water. Okay. Two gills of meadow cream. Two pawfuls of rosemary. Oh, not pottle. Pawful. Eh. 
Sorry. Roast all vegetables in a warm, uh, uh, in a warm over until tender and smiling. Add to simmering and seasoned creamy water. Simmer for four whiskers, low and slow. What? That's not a measurement of time. Puree until smooth as silk. Garnish of crushed nuts and sliced green onions. Cool. Onion potato. This is kind of the one I want. Two tablespoons of butter. Two gills of minced onion. Two gills? That's not... What? I don't understand. The, this, these aren't Britishisms. These are Redwallisms. One pawful of salt. Two diced potatoes. One gills metal cream. And one dra uh, Jack H cheese. Melt butter in a... Okay, we have... We don't have the butter. We also don't have salt. Or, like, cream. So how are we supposed to make these? Just, like... Does he provide that? And then we got the shrimp stew. I want to make the potato soup. Honestly. I know people don't like potatoes, but you know what? Whatever. Whee! Whoa, hey! Okay. Can I actually add anything to the soup right now? Because this is the part where, when I played on my first time, I didn't add anything to the soup. I talked to Rootsworth. And he was like, hey, you making the soup? I'm like, yeah. And then he's like, you didn't make the soup, but okay, I guess you don't get to make the soup. So. It took a bit to track down each ingredient, but here they are. My, my. Then you've already finished your gathering. And here I thought you were dawdling about... Oh, well, I was, but... A few but... radishes had been mistakenly pulled from the garden. But with the help of Rootsworth and the dollop of rosemary, our young scout delivered a fine soup. Well, that wasn't my juice. fault. You didn't tell me to Is sniff out. Soup? You can still mix it up a bit more right now. But once the lid... I remember this. Top, ...you'll be done. And live or die with the consequences. Yes, I think that's it. What do you think? I think any meal is better than an empty stomach, and that no mouse is a master overnight. You gave it your best, and that's the point. Ah, oh, would you smell that? Simply scrumptious. Okay, they changed that. With your errands for this evening. Feel free to explore and socialize to your heart's content. When you're quite ready, ring the dinner bell, and we'll begin the festivities. As Liam walked away from the cauldron, he found himself thinking of the way his large and poor family shared a meal. There were many days that his mother had need to stretch her meager supplies with wild rice or woodland roots. But somehow, she always managed. Okay, they definitely changed that a little bit. On my first playthrough, like, they made you choose a recipe. And then you had to put stuff in a pot, which I apparently didn't do. This time, they definitely changed that. And it's more just like, hey, you got the ingredients. Now talk to Rootsworth and it automatically makes the soup off screen. That's interesting. Ready to continue? Yes. With all the fanfare, Rootsworth could muster a wondrous feast of quince pie. That is not what we made. And a chutney of wild carrots and beets. Were served alongside oh, the on the alongside the soup. A barley toast and a stout red cheese. Dang, he was busy while we were dawdling. Cordial and chilled mint tea with all their tongues and lifted their spirits. Last but not least was a lofty steamed pudding. Oh, I know what I'm using as the thumbnail. And set of flame for quite dramatic effect. <laughs> was Mr. Coyle's fiery ring of devastation. Dang, that's awesome. Fitting, if dramatic, nay. I freaking love the CG art styles here. And sang long and was thanked generously for his, uh, shall we say, questionable stool. What the heck? For all the mirth, Liam was troubled at Sophia's absence. My friend what questionable stew? I get out all the ingredients Tonight, they asked me to. We celebrate a new member of our brotherhood. Sisterhood! Yes, well... Oh no, Tuss is that same. person. We've all admired your hard work, loyalty, and steadfast spirit. Well done. You entered this camp a nameless initiate. But now, after demonstrating your skill, we give you a new name, known only to yourself and your fellow scouts. Three cheers for Liam and the Three cheers for Eagle Eye. Huzzah! Eagle Eye? Is that because I dawdled at the telescopes too long? Stand now, scouts, and be sober in heart and in mind. Be without fear, malice, or cruelty. Be true to your word, your heart, and your fellow scouts. Be without guile, and speak the truth at all times. 
kindly if possible, directly in need. Love Lilligrove, the land, and safeguard any who sojourn in her borders. This is your own, and we, your witnesses, share it with you. Completing the oath, Captain <laughs> Liam Robin looks like he's sulking. As Liam's fellow scouts shook his paw in congratulations, but he was clearly thinking of other things. Where was his dear Sophia? She knew how bad our soup was going to be. Liam to the platform's edge, presented him with this very way glass, and bade him look toward the sexton's field. Oh, that's the magnifying nice. Lens, he saw his beloved, finishing the preparations for an even larger party that only awaited for his imminent arrival. But alas, the party was never to happen. Not that night. Not ever. What? Seen through the glass, a oh, no! shape stepped out of the shadows. It was a ragged. Is this Clooney? Dressed in strange garb and wielding a wicked cutlass. Show me his tail. Every beast ran as another rat stepped into the firelight, and then another. Suddenly, Sophia was lunging forward with a fiery brand, catching the villain full on the snout and knocking it to the ground. Liam was frozen in shock when Robin grabbed him by the shoulders and spoke most urgently. I wish we had more time, but what you do this very moment is what makes you a scout. You have everything you need for this mission. Skills, tools, training, but most of all, you have courage. I bid you make haste to our village. Go to the lighthouse and fire the beacon. Be swift, but silent, as you must not alert the raiders to our plan. Lend aid where you can, but you must not be captured. I will ready the militia and join you shortly. Every moment counts. Go now, swiftly! But I want to pick up jam on the way. Rather much, isn't it? They're just rats. Those bandits have tried to get in here dozens of times. William, there you are quite wrong. Red Wall has been captured before. Even the great fortress of Salamanderstron has been captured by vermin. We should never underestimate the villains who seek our enslavement. It surely leads to defeat. True. But more importantly, Lily Grove is no fortress. It's a small village with no wall and few warriors. And these were not scattered <gasps> brigands. But vicious sea there he is. pirating under the banner of Clooney the Skur. Clooney the Skur? It's Clooney the Scourge! Heart pounding, the newest scout raced toward the besieged town on a mission to light the beacon atop the decrepit old lighthouse that hadn't burned in ages. Every moment mattered, but remaining undiscovered mattered even more. Yeah, well, we'll get to that next time, I think.